Thank you guys for coming. Uh, my name's Kyle Moore. I'm the Director of Development for the Graduate School and the library here at SIUE. Um, the Graduate School wanted to, I don't know, put on a program to, to let you guys ask questions of successful alumni. Uh, so that's what this little speaker series is. We, we called it If I Knew Then What I Know Now. And part of the problem is that some of the things you don't even know that you don't know. But uh, we, we're going to put these on. We're going to bring in some really cool and successful people. And we hope that you'll, you'll come and ask them questions to, to help you uh, further your ambitions and careers. Uh, today, uh, being our guinea pig for the first time here, uh, which we greatly appreciate, uh, is Joe Alaria. Uh, he's a certified financial planner with uh, Visionary Wealth Advisors here in town. Um, Joe received his undergraduate degree in marketing from uh, SIU Carbondale, uh, where he also played wide receiver uh, on their football team. He, uh, he received his MBA here uh, from SIUE in 2012 uh, and was the recipient of a competitive graduate award, uh, which is something that the, uh, the graduate school does uh, every year to, to hand out and support uh, students in their research. Um, he's also a thought leader in the world of finance and has been featured in multiple publications, including Yahoo Finance, NASDAQ.com, Investopedia, and NerdWallet. So at this point, I'll turn it over to Joe, and thank you. All right, thanks, Kyle. Can I bring you around with me to do that intro all the time? I'd be happy to do it. I'm available for rental. For <laughs> all right. We have a, a smaller group, so it's kind of nice today. Uh, we'll be able to do a lot of Q&A at, at the end. Um, but thanks to Kyle for asking me to come out. I don't know if I would consider myself successful at this point, um, but I would like to think I'm tracking toward those those goals. So, and it's a passion of mine, honestly, to help young people. I, I still consider myself somewhat a young person, so uh, I kind of feel like a, a, I like being that big brother role to where I can reach out and help you guys and girls maybe make better decisions and not waste as much time as I did or um, things like that. So, let me just to give you a little background on myself. This is also, I do come in a cordless version too. Um, so I'm from Edwardsville, I was born and raised, uh, graduated from Edwardsville High School. I uh, was always an, an athlete, I was very involved in sports growing up. Uh, so as Kyle mentioned, I got a scholarship to play football at SIU Carbondale. Did that for four years, graduated with a marketing degree. Then uh, after graduating, moved back to, here to Edwardsville and uh, pretty much right away started the MBA program. Um, I did a little volunteer football coaching at my local high school. <clears throat> and four months after that, I, I uh, got my first full-time job in the financial industry. Uh, that was at a small independent firm in Edwardsville, and, and now I'm with Visionary Wealth Advisors, which is in Edwardsville. Uh, so from there, I, I took about 10, 12 months to uh, finish my MBA, graduated, and fast forward a few years, and here we are. So that's kind of the, that's the resume, you know, you look on, a, on an ad for something like this, you see all those things, but you don't really hear what goes into it, right? So that was my goal was to kind of communicate, can everybody hear me okay? Okay. That was kind of my goal was to communicate those things uh, that were behind the scenes, that led me from one point to the next, because I know when I've listened or researched people that have had success or that I admire and look up to, I always wonder, like, where did you start? Like, how, you're obviously th there now, but where, how did you get to that point? So I want to just pick out two main themes here in about five minutes, ten minutes, uh, that I think were the biggest. I mean, obviously, there I could write about ten books on, you know, I do a lot of research with uh, successful people and entrepreneurs and millionaires, billionaires, and, and they've written many books. I'd encourage you to read those as well. Uh, I'll touch more on that later, but a couple of themes that I thought were most important in my experience was one being people, you know, and part of people is, thank you, part of, uh, part of that is leveraging the people that you know. So when I was in college, I'd always hear people talk about networking, and I didn't really know what that meant. I kind of figured it was, hey, you know, call the people that you know and see if there's an opportunity for you. And, and that's part of it. But let me, let me go back to my resume bullet points and I'll, and I'll tell you a couple of stories. When I was a senior in college, I 
saw an ad about uh, an event that was similar to this. A gentleman, he was a financial advisor, was coming in to speak to our football team. It was optional. You could show up. Much like you guys here, you're not required to be here. You probably care about something that you want to ask me about or you just like to listen. So I applaud you for even showing up here when you didn't have to. But I listened to this guy talk about uh, his career and being a financial advisor um, and, and just saving. He was trying to help us learn how to save money for retirement, open a Roth IRA, which had no idea what he was talking about. I was hoping he was going to tell me the next hot stock so I could just be a millionaire, but that didn't happen. But, um, you know, that was one thing. That was, a, that was a person that I met and still know, and he, he had a big influence on me being a financial advisor and even getting into the industry, just learning about it. So that was an experience that I could have, uh, you know, stayed home and <clears throat> kept playing Xbox, which I did like to play back in the day, and or, you know, gone into the event. So you guys are here, so I don't need to tell that to you. Um, another thing, so Kyle mentioned the uh, Competitive Graduate Award. So when I was starting my MBA program, um, I contacted my, the biggest SIUE person I knew, uh, which was my brother, and uh, he was a basketball coach here, and I said, hey, you know, I'm going to do this MBA program. Is there any, do you know of anything that could help me to like a scholarship or anything I could apply for. So he shared with me the competitive graduate award and um, I thought, well, what the heck, they only give out 19, I think, but I might as well apply and ended up getting it. Um, and it was, it was huge and we can touch more on that at the end as well. But again, those are two cases where just reaching out to one was a, a person I did not know. And the other was, was someone I did know, you know, when I graduated, uh, or when I was actually doing my MBA program, my first job, the first job I got, how did I get that? I was at my house, no job, doing the, the MBA program, but looking for work. I wanted to, to get started doing something. I'm literally scrolling through my, my cell phone and my contacts thinking, who can I call that, that might be able to help me out? So I find an old football coach, and he, he's an entrepreneur. He runs his own business. I said, hey, can't hurt, I'll give him a call, see if he's hiring. Literally this office had five people in it. So chances of him hiring, not that great. But again, gave him a call. Sure enough, uh, he was hiring. So he brought me in and I thought I was gonna be, you know, in a marketing role, because I was a marketing major. Well, uh, I was always intrigued, like I said, about finance. We kind of had a conversation about being an advisor. And long story short, I came on board in a dual role and really and then eventually transition it to be an advisor so um, again just a few instances of people and how people you, you got to leverage the people that you know or if you don't know the right people you got to know that you got to meet the right people and it's not all about uh, you know them helping you you can look for ways to help them as well but I think we get caught up in our shell of sometimes of hey I'm gonna work hard and do this and do that you don't think about who are the people out there that maybe want to help you. You know, I'm, I'm someone like that. If someone were to reach out to me, you know, someone in your position and ask me about my career, and I'd be more than happy to help them, even if I didn't know them at all. You know, but just the fact that they are reaching out, they want help. You know, there are a lot of people out there who are where you want to be, who would be more than happy to help you in those areas. You know, so today, um, I have my own financial planning practice. I have clients all over St. Louis, uh, the Metro East area, and I still am, am using that network of people from all the way back to when I was a, a high school, you know, athlete, you know, in college through the, uh, the marketing program, through the football program, through my MBA program here uh, at SIUE. I still, to this day, am in tapping those networks to continue to help build my business and share with people, you know, what I'm doing as well. So that's something that you're never going to, if you want the single biggest lesson that I've learned is you got to be people focused. Um, you have to continue to broaden your network just for one, to learn what's out there for, um, again, I never planned on being a financial advisor until I heard the guy at, when I was a senior in college talking about, what is it like to be a financial advisor? What does that even mean? How do, you, how do you deal with investments in the stock market? So I thought that was pretty interesting. 
So if you don't know the right people, get to know the right people. Set meetings with them, ask them to lunch, ask them to coffee, uh, ask them if you can stop by their office if they have a free 15, 20 minutes. I really think you'll be shocked. I thought I heard a story about Steve Jobs. Maybe it was Bill Gates, I get him confused. But uh, doing it when, I think he was 12 years old and he called um, an executive, a CEO at his house, found him in the phone book and called him and you know, asked him some questions and wanted to get together and you know, he's 12 years old. So obviously that worked out well for him, that, that train of thought. The, what's the worst that could happen if you reach out to somebody and you want to meet with them, you want to ask them questions, what's the worst that can happen? Anybody? They say no. Thanks, Kyle. They say no. No big deal. Go on to the next one. So I'd say find those people uh, who you would like to contact and maybe network with and who are in a position if it's a, a specific career that you're looking into. You know, if, if I want to be a, a pro basketball player, I don't know, I might try to contact Steph Curry. You know, that set my sights pretty high, but you never know. Um, if, he, if he said no, if I didn't get a hold of him, Maybe I go to LeBron James, or he might be a little lower on my list. I don't know. I'm kidding. Any LeBron fans? Um, so, you know, and, and again, just thoughts of when you set those meetings, what, what do you ask them? What are the best and worst parts about your job? You know, what do you enjoy most? What are the biggest challenges to what you do? What's your day look like? Literally, when you come in, what, what types of activities are you doing? Um, what could someone like me expect if I were to get into this industry. Because again, some of these people might be up here, but they weren't always there. You know, they, they entered at a lower uh, point, most likely. So what are the challenges for someone getting into the business? Is that something that uh, you could explain to me? And then what could a, a young person look forward to down the road? So those are all things, and I'll, at the end, if we have time, I'll, I'll kind of touch on my experience, and I'll answer those question, all of those questions for you when it relates to the financial industry. So first biggest theme, people. Second biggest theme, I just think this is a, this is a very big problem with society as a whole is you got to understand that it's, it's possible. I, I listened to this guy, his name's Les Brown, make a mental note or a physical note about him. Um, he's a motivational speaker and, and he says this all the time, it's possible. You know, why limit yourself on your vision, on your goals? I used to think uh, back in the day when I was young, I used to think, man, if I could make $60,000 in a salary, I'd be pretty happy with that. You know, that, that'd be nice. I could probably, I could live a pretty good lifestyle. I didn't come from a, um, a white collar background, so I thought that'd be pretty cool. And then I said, man, if I could make $100,000, that I have made it at that point, make $100,000. You know, uh, but now where, I'm, where I am today, I think $100,000, why why'd I limit myself to just that? And it's not all about money, but in, in the case of, of that area, why limit yourself? And that's a big, and, and a story about that, I guess, is, is um, I heard a story about a, a gentleman, and uh, he was working at Edison Electric Company. This was 1899. So think back, 1899. He was working for Edison Electric. He was getting paid $1,900 a year. So that was probably a, a decent wage back then. Um, he was offered a lavish promotion uh, at, that, at that company. And instead of taking that promotion, he instead became an entrepreneur and started his own company. He had to figure out how to live on $150 a month. He failed in just one year. Then he decides to start building cars, uh, race cars rather. That business didn't take too long for that one. That also failed. So here you got this guy. He's had, a, had a, an opportunity for a large promotion at a, an established company. Doesn't do it. Starts his own business. Fail. Starts another business. Fail. So what do you think he does at that point? He starts his third business. Ford Motor Company. And today that company is worth over $144 billion. It's got 187,000 employees and they produce 2.5 million cars per year. That guy was Henry Ford. So don't sell yourself short, even if, sometimes we just stop ourselves before we even get there, right? Some of us might have said, well, yeah, I've had this idea to, to be an entrepreneur, to start a business, but ah, that, I could never do that. 
take the promotion. Not to say that's a bad thing, but I think that's, that happens a lot. And some of us maybe step out there a little bit and try to do something and then it doesn't work out, so let's go back to what's comfortable and what's safe. Uh, in my experience, I, I made a scary jump, I would say, from a salary, uh, comfortable position to one where now I'm an entrepreneur. I run my own practice. It was, it was scary. It was a risk, but you got to believe in yourself to, to do those things. Um, study any successful person, they're always going to say you got to take risks, right? So if you don't believe in yourself, don't take a risk. But if you do, you got to sometimes step out when you're not comfortable. Um, in my own experience, you know, one of my biggest goals was to write for the, or to be featured in the Wall Street Journal. So I'm in the financial industry. We all know what the Wall Street Journal is, right? Um, I used to think that was so far-fetched, but it's been on my goal sheet, be in the Wall Street Journal. I want to have a framed, you know, one of those framed newspaper things on my wall with an article that I wrote. A couple years ago, I, I started, I had an opportunity to uh, be featured on this website called nerd, nerdwallet.com. Never heard of it. No one I ever talked to to this day has hardly has heard of it. But uh, it was a growing platform, and I figured, well, you got to get started somewhere. So I started writing for nerdwallet.com. Fast forward two and a half years, nerdwallet starts to gain some traction, starts to get recognized. So then some of my articles start getting picked up in other publications. Christian Science Monitor was the first one. I'm like, man, I've not really heard of that either, but that's kind of cool. I got picked up by somebody. And then I get picked up by nasdaq.com. And I thought, man, that's pretty cool. NASDAQ, one of the major indexes in the financial world. That's pretty cool. And then just last year, I had an article get picked up in Yahoo Finance, which to me, I kind of think of, of that as a pretty well-known publication. That was, uh, I would say, probably the best, the biggest publication I've had to date. And then probably not more than two months ago, I had someone contact me. They're writing an article for the Wall Street Journal. So <clears throat> I have an opportunity, I need to pitch an idea for the article, but that's happening right now, which is funny that I'm having this conversation with you all. So you can't sell yourself short on the things that you want to do. I heard someone say, set your goals, let those sink in for a minute, cross them out, go bigger, let those sink in for a minute, and cross them out one more time, and just get really crazy with the things that you want to do in setting your goals. So hopefully that was helpful. That was my 10 minutes. I think, uh, good, I'm right on time. Um, so I'm going to open it up for questions. I've got a couple as well. But why don't we start, whether it's uh, MBA program questions, SIUE, uh, financial industry, anything. You guys fire away. So if you were back in school today, what would you do differently on your second go around? Um, I think uh, some of what I've said some of it already, but I think I would do a little more research on the uh, the majors that are out there, the you know the industries, the jobs that are out there in the job market before I you know narrow into this is the major I want to go into. I really didn't know when I decided to be a marketing major in my in my undergrad, I probably couldn't write half a page on what marketing even is. I just I, yeah, I guess marketing, I think. Mad Men was just coming out at the time. I was like, that seems cool. I'll do marketing. That's advertising. It's not even marketing. So, uh, <laughs> you know, look into, did I, did I, did I want to do uh, biology? No, I knew I didn't want to do biology, but I didn't want to do chemistry. I probably wasn't going to be in that science field, but I still had no clue what, what is out there. And doing what I do now, I get an opportunity to learn from a lot of people uh, meeting with my clients. And I just ask them, hey, what do you, you know, obviously, what do you do for a living? And I hear a lot of interesting things, and I, every, to this day, I'm still learning new jobs I did not even know existed. So I'd, I'd say that. I'd say look into the, uh, and that's part of networking, but look into what's even out there and have a better idea before I try to decide what it is I want to do. Do you, do you know why adults ask little kids what they want to be when they grow up? It's because we're still looking for ideas. <laughs> All right, so anybody, question? There you go. Um, 
So in between when you got that advising job and when you actually started your own practice, did you jump jobs? Did you check out other fields? Or did you just stay at that position and decide to start your own? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, Can you repeat? Yeah, thank you. Um, when I switched jobs from my first uh, advising job to when I started my own practice, uh, was I researching other jobs? Did I, you want to repeat, repeat what you said? Oh, yeah, I was wondering if like, you checked out different departments or different yeah. job types or if you just stuck with that. Right, was I looking at other, other fields or just sticking with that one? So what, what happened there was um, I, I had a client base, you know, I had clients that I worked with, but I really didn't run my own practice, so I basically worked for somebody else. I, really, I wasn't looking to make a change in terms of my role or responsibilities, just more in terms of uh, having the freedom to do the things I want to do and um, own my own business. Now, within uh, Visionary, where I'm at now, um, there are 30 to 50, I would say, advisors, which I don't own Visionary. But within Visionary, each person has their own practice. So I don't work for anybody other than my clients. Um, no one tells me I get, have to be at work at a certain time. I don't, it, it's my own thing. So that's a benefit of the structure that I'm in. Uh, but, but I w really wasn't looking for any other roles. I just kind of wanted a, a different structure within the company. Does that make sense? Good question. Question. If um, you were interested in getting like you know ideas about like you know stocks and bonds and like you're interested but you don't know exactly like what to specifically start looking at just to even get a simple foundation of understanding of what maybe you could possibly do to you know just seek into some type of business of that sort or just even get some valuable information or gain knowledge from it. Where would you say is a good place to like start like to get a good understanding? Uh, if I wanted to learn more about stocks and investments, mm, yeah. where would I recommend that would be a good place to start to learn about those things? Mm. Well, um, I'd say nerdwallet.com is one, uh, but it really is. And um, you may have heard of investopedia.com. So that's another, that's a, that's a good source as well that I'm also, I also write for them and they have platforms on there where people can go on and ask questions. So NerdWallet, for instance, and Investopedia, they have their own platforms where you can type a question, whatever your question is. Hey, what, what uh, although I don't like this question, but what are the biggest hot stocks out there? And that's what everybody wants to know, but there's no good answer to that. Uh, or, hey, I'm thinking about starting my own business. What do I need to do? There are advisors all over the country that will answer those questions for you, and it's free. So. Other than that, they have articles that uh, people write about different topics that you can pull up and read as well. Did that answer your question? Yeah, and, and it can be about credit cards, bank accounts, um, estate planning, insurance, anything financial, you'll find answers on those websites. Were you always interested in money and financials, or did your first kind of job spark that interest? That's a good question. Um, I remember back in seventh grade, I played a stock market game uh, with a buddy of mine, and we, you know, that's a long story, I won't get into it, but uh, it was a fun game. And that, that was probably the first time I ever had any exposure to, to that. I was always intrigued about it. And I think after listening to the uh, advisor speak when I was in college, and then coming back, calling my coach. My coach owned his own financial services firm. Again, I didn't even know what he did, to be honest with you. But um, I think similar to, you know, when I was younger, I always wanted to play the guitar. I always wanted to learn. And I tried a couple times, kind of failed. And then finally, when I got to college, I said, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure this out. So I had a buddy of mine come and kind of help me out. And you just got to try, try those things. If you have an interest now, it's probably something you should look into. And doesn't mean that it's going to be your career, but um, for me, small interests, and then probably developed and grew from there. So, question. Okay, yeah, you were talking about how people are very important, and um, I was just wondering, how do you kind of like connect to people, like with your clients? How do you meet them, and how do you keep you know the conversation going? Because you might meet people, and you're trying to network with them, but then at a point, it's like 
you guys are just so far apart. Like, mm -hmm. how do you do that? Even for people who want, because I'm not in the business world, yeah. and I'm just thinking, like, how do you kind of, like, yeah. connect to people in your field? And how do you keep that, you know, that kind of conversation so that when right. you need to reach out to them, it's not just like, oh, yeah, I can't remember your name. That's a good question. So for you, in terms of a student reaching out to someone in, in the, yeah, how do you, how do you network practically? How do you reach out to them and, and make that connection and keep the dialogue going? Um, I've done this in the professional world with professionals that I think are in a better place than I am. And I think you would do it similarly to how I did that, which is just contacting that person. And maybe it's someone you know, maybe it's someone you don't know. But let's say it's someone you don't know and you just want to meet them and, and learn more about what they do. It's as simple as that, hey, Mr. or Mrs. Jones, um, I noticed that you're a CEO at Smith & Company, and I'm really interested in, in your industry. I'm a student at SIUE. I was just hoping if you ever have a, a free 30 minutes that maybe we could grab coffee or have lunch. And I, I just had some questions. I'd love to just be around you and, and maybe get some tips, get some advice if you're ever free to do that. You know, and that, that could be a, f a phone call or email, but it could be as simple as that. Um, and then, you know, when you sit down with them, like I said, these questions that I went through, if I'm in your shoes, I want to know what is going to be the worst part and the best part about what you do. So that I have all, you know, you don't want to be sold on, yeah, you should, you know, I could tell you all the good things about being a financial planner, but what about the bad things? Because there's, there's some things that aren't so fun, too. If I'm you, I want to know both. You know, I want to know what are, the, what are going to be the challenges for me? Is that something I even want to get into? Do I think I can overcome that? You know, is it, what, what are the benefits? What are the rewards? Is it worth it? Um, so th once you sit down with them, I'd say ask them those types of things. And then they don't expect, uh, you know, if I'm in that position, you guys contacted me, I don't expect a lot in return, you know, right now. But you just never know what can come from that. And then so how do you leave it? Um, you know, Mr. Smith, Mr. Jones, whoever, I'd love to stay in touch periodically and maybe down the road we can get together again. You know, you could shoot together, shoot an email to him or her. SIUE actually has a mentor program that uh, Kyle sent me recently. And did you, were you guys aware that you had that here? So it's through the Career Development Center. In case you guys are interested, yeah, you can look that up on, online and they've got a, they've got a mentor program. Yeah. So. There's a resource for you right there where people like me have signed up completely open to people like you reaching out and doing those types of things. Uh, but even if they're not signed up with that program, the, these, the people that you want to sit down with still might be open to doing that. And again, worst thing that can happen is no, and then you move on and, and ask somebody else. Were, were there any sort of activities or events as a graduate student that helped you make connections? Um, I'm sure they were, although I can't remember uh, what they were called, but I do <laughs> remember, you know, these are the types of things where uh, when the university hosts these events, I'd go to as many as you can because you just, uh, you don't know who you're going to meet, who you're going to bump into. So the graduate school, you know, the ones that popped in my head are the awards banquets, but uh, that was through the graduate school where I did my uh, I got my competitive graduate award, and then I was invited back to speak at one of those. Um, those were those were great events, but you gotta figure out where this stuff is posted in the university, and just keep tabs on it. You know, as an example, in the business world, you know they have chamber of commerce meetings, uh, they have networking meetings in the community. I try to do my best to keep those on my calendar, and if I don't have anything going on, I go, I try to go as much as I can because you just never know who you're going to bump into. And to go back to how do I meet clients, that's one way that I meet clients. Um, another way I meet clients is I feel I uh, try to target those people who I think would be good clients for me. And I do the exact same thing. And I say, you know, so what's your name? Nola D. Nola D. Nola D. Yes. I'll say, Nola D, um, hey, you know, I know you don't know much about what I do, but I was just thinking maybe sometime we could go out and grab coffee. I'd love to share with you kind of how we help clients um, might be something that we can do for you. It might be a mutually beneficial uh, meeting. If not, no big deal. Just 
We'd love to hear more about what you do as well. Boom. And that's all it is. I mean, people, the science of people um, is, is pretty simple when you break it down. I mean, people want to help. Most people want to help other people. There's a need. There's like an inherent need to do that um, for most people out there. Now, you do have some that don't. Probably wouldn't, you know, couldn't care less. But all you have to do is reach out. That's the first step. And if I'm in a, a position of, you know, hey, I'm hiring people every year or I'm high up in an organization and I have a college student contact me um, and ask me questions and take the initiative, that's going to be pretty impressive to me, I would, I would think. Um, whether you're an undergraduate student or a graduate student, that's definitely something that, uh, that would stick out. What are the best and worst things about what you do? All right, good question. Um, what are the best and worst things about being a financial planner? Is anybody else, did anybody else come fro to learn more about that specific industry? Only one, okay. I'll be brief then, no. Uh, the best part for me, I think, is, is you know, I'm an, I am an entrepreneur within my industry, so that's really not specific to the financial world, but when you're an entrepreneur, you tend to have a little, mo little bit more freedom, so I don't have a boss. But in terms of financial planning, I would say just the opportunity to help people and to educate them on things that you know about that they don't know. And you could really have a huge impact on people's lives through their finances. So we've done that. I mean, we do it all the time, and that that's kind of gives some personal fulfillment. The worst part is... When you start out, sometimes um, you do have to get out and find new clients and prospect. And, and sometimes you present, you work hard, and you do a presentation, and you show it to somebody, and they say no. You know, uh, you have to be able to take rejection. But the reward is, is a little bit bigger for doing that sort of thing. So typically, the relationship between stress and risk and rewards and benefits kind of go together, you know? So is my job stressful at times? Yeah, it can be pretty stressful. But I'm willing to take on that stress for the benefits that come with it. Um, your typical nine to fiver uh, that's not gonna have a lot of stress, reward may not be as great. But that's, that doesn't mean everybody should take on more stress because that's not always the best thing. So you gotta figure out what's the best fit for you. Kyle had some good questions. Right, you want to shoot right. some of those off? I'll throw it up. But you know what? I, I, in sitting here and listening to everybody, what advice would you give to a college student starting work as a financial planner? What's the best way for them to get started on their? I mean, let's be honest here. Who 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 here doesn't want to retire someday? That's what I thought. So um, I actually had a class in college where they asked what our ultimate goal was, and my ultimate goal was to retire. So um, <laughs> they didn't like my answer. Uh, but so, uh, if, if you could give them just a tiny bit of advice on what you, what's the best way to go about getting out, you know, is, what is it to, to help get them started on their road to success? Yeah, in, in personal finance, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's very simple, but you know, saving money and being being smart about your money. I mean, it, it's really, I think there's going to be a big epidemic uh, here in the next 20 or 30 years with people who. I always thought they'd be able to retire and they're not going to be able to retire. I don't think our, I'll say our, our generation, I'm going to include myself with you guys, really understands what you need to do from a savings standpoint in order to retire. Our grandparents, some, some of our parents have pensions uh, that have really helped them and been the, the main part of their retirement income. I don't have a pension, I can tell you that much, and unless you work for a university maybe or a government entity, a lot of private companies, they're not offering pensions. It's all about what are you saving in your 401k um, and what are you doing on your own. The more you do now, the less you have to do later because of hopefully compound interest is working for you. If you don't do anything until you're 50 and then you sit down and say, man, I need to start saving, uh, you could be in a tough spot because at that point, it's all math. It's all a math problem. So if you have to save $3,000 a month to, to reach retirement, you may not have $3,000 a month to save, right? You may only have 200 bucks a month. So that's what I would say is just get started early. 
um, you know, open up a simple, um, you could open up maybe a Roth IRA account if you have a, if you have a part-time job or something like that, but open up something, just a simple savings account, start putting money in it every month. Mm -hmm. College kids don't always like hearing that because I know money's a little tight for you right now, but when I, when I was in college and was on scholarship, we didn't get very much to live off campus in Carbondale. <laughs> the cost of living is not very high. But I tried to save, you know, 50 bucks every time I'd get my check. Just put it away into an account somewhere. So it was there for me. Anybody else got any questions? There you yeah, <laughs> okay. So as I said earlier, I'm not like into the business. So I don't know what do you do as a financial advisor? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, so primarily, I would say we help people plan for retirement. Okay, and we advise them on their investments. So on the stock market, stocks, bonds, mutual funds, things like that. Um, but we do, I'm a, as a certified financial planner, that's a specific designation that not all financial advisors have. So we are a little more comprehensive in the planning that we'll do for people. So we will look at their tax situation. We'll look at their estate planning, you know, their wills. Um, powers of attorney, things like that, which you may not know a whole lot about right now, but um, we'll look at their insurance situation as well and kind of counsel them and advise them on all those different things. Does that answer your question? You had a couple other ones. That, I did. Can all I right. steal that from you? Yeah, absolutely. Because I did want to touch on a couple things that I thought were good. Um, in terms of the MBA program, so one of your questions I think was, what was a course that really taught you a lot that you maybe didn't think would, would do that? You know, when I did the MBA program here through the graduate school, uh, I thought it was going to be a lot about, well, business and how to, how to run a business, crunching numbers and things like that. And there's some of that, but the most I got out of that was kind of what I'm talking about uh, regarding people is how to communicate. Um, Obviously, the MBA program is a business management, you know, type of program, but um, it just teaches you how to communicate, how to be around other people, how to have emotional intelligence, how to, I mean, has anybody ever even heard that term, emotional intelligence? Yeah, that's big. That's big in the business world, I can tell you. When you work with other people, you're around other people all day. It's not the same as being in class with somebody and doing a group project together, okay? You're spending eight hours a day with the same people, 365, you know, all the time, right? You guys can probably attest uh, who are in the, work, the workforce. You have to know how to communicate. And the MBA program, surprisingly, when people ask me what was the best thing that, that I got out of that, by far was my people skills, my communication skills, and just the ability to be aware of those things where I see a lot of people and I notice people that haven't had that education, they can't communicate. So how can you get to where you want to get if you can't portray the message that you're trying to say? Or maybe you, you're not aware that you're coming off uh, when you speak and you're coming off a certain way and it doesn't, may not sit well with someone that's sitting across the table. Uh, we, we took a class, we read a book called Difficult Conversations and I still think back to that book when I run into conflicts, uh, I write that down if, you, if you're a, a reader, but it's a great, great book. And if you do the MBA program, you'll probably, they'll probably still have you read it. But it's all about conflict. How do, you ha how do you have those awkward conversations with people when you have a problem and you, you need to discuss it? How do you do that? Um, so I always think in my head when I have problems, what am I doing to add to this problem? <laughs> what can I change to fix this problem? because the, the tendency is to point fingers and try to blame other people. But uh, that, was, that was the biggest thing I wanted to cover from, uh, from the questions that we had. Does anybody else have any, anything? We got plenty of time. Yeah. Can you maybe talk a little bit about a hardship that you had to overcome or like a time that you may have failed in the industry and yeah. you gotta jump those hurdles? So. Um, you know, probably the biggest thing, I don't know if I would, if I would call it a hardship, but it was definitely the time of m the most stress was when I did change jobs and change companies. So in the financial world, you can, you can work in a couple different sh types of companies. 
Uh, you can work in a small business like me where you, you can be an entrepreneur and you're basically full commission. You're almost like a salesperson where a lot of salespeople, they, the amount of money they make is based on how much they're selling. Um, or you can work in a research capacity at a large company where they'll pay you a salary to, to do X, Y, or Z. The, the biggest hardship that I had was, and I knew it was going to happen, so, but I guess that helped a little bit. But when I changed jobs, I went from knowing what the paycheck that I was going to be getting every month to having no guarantee that any paycheck was coming in um, and still having bills to pay you know, and not having mom or dad to be there and, and front me for a couple months. You know, this was me and my wife at the time. So uh, that was very hard, that was very stressful. But as I alluded to earlier, you, you know, sometimes you have to take those risks and I'm, we're still doing all right. So <laughs> made it through that, that time. I applied for life insurance at the time and they told me my cholesterol was high. And I kind of inquired about that and they said it could be due to stress. So I said, yeah, that makes sense. All right. Um, but that's usually when in the financial industry, that's the hardest. But when you start out in the industry, I think the stat is like 90% of people will fail out within the first five years. So it's, it's a hard industry because it's usually that type of environment where it's on you to build your business. And it, it's in some cases can be more of a like kind of a sales environment. Now we don't feel that we operate in a sales capacity when we advise clients. So some advisors are out there, you know, selling products and, and a little more pushy and things like that. I mean, we don't feel that we do that, but uh, you still have to, at the end of the day, find ways to build your business. And that goes for if you run a bakery, you know, if you, um, run a tutoring company or, or anything like that. I mean, your focus is to build a business. So um, if you think like a CEO, then you probably want to be more in that entrepreneur role. And uh, that's where I think the MBA program was great because I learned about, I learned about marketing. I learned about accounting. You know, you learn about everything in the business. And so when you only have five people in your office, uh, you don't have an accounting department or a marketing department, you got to do as much as you can on your own. So that was a, that was a big benefit for me. I'm losing some people here. Any other questions? Can we get a, can we get a little hand for Joe? All right. Thank you guys. Again, kudos for coming out.